So Tommy Robinson was recently released from prison. He was let out two days ago. You've probably seen that video of him returning home on Facebook, seen by two and a half million people. It's been a national story. Of course, it's been a response in part to the hashtag Free Tommy movement. But why did he go to prison in the first place? Well, he was arrested on the 25th of May outside Leeds Crown Court. He was initially arrested for breach of the peace. People know that breach of the peace is not a particularly serious charge. Very rarely that it would lead to a custodial sentence that you go to prison. Can happen if you've had previous bad character and so on. But it's not a serious charge. Having been arrested, however, a judge then looked at the fact that he broadcast from outside the Crown Court on Facebook Live. And this was a trial, big trial, involving dozens of people in terms of sexual assault, sexual exploitation, um, which had a blanket journalist ban. The media couldn't report on it because it could have created a potential mistrial. Now, Tommy Robinson was in contempt of court for Facebook broadcasting on Facebook Live that trial. He was literally naming the people who were being charged, where they worked in some cases, and he created the possibility of a mistrial. So what Tommy Robinson did, this is why it's bad, is that he could have allowed people who were potentially rapists, nonces, to get off scot-free. Now explain to me how that kind of a person is a hero to you, if you're a free Tommy person. Explain to me, because I don't quite get it. There was a, a petition signed by 600,000 people to Theresa May, the Prime Minister, saying, free Tommy Robbins, as if this guy was a, a modern-day Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela fought for equality under the law in South Africa, whether you were white, black or brown. Tommy Robinson is trying to create a mistrial for potential nonces, pedos and rapists. Get a grip. Now, the reason why there is a journalistic ban on these things, the reason why the media can't report on it, is because it could prejudice the trial. Tommy, Tommy Robinson likes to talk about British values. A fair free trial is one of them, you twat. Imagine if you were being charged with something and you weren't guilty. It could be anything. Uh, you mug somebody. Speeding. Drink driving. And on the front page of The Sun, on the day that you were going to face the magistrates, the Crown Court or whatever, was, it, was your face saying you were guilty. Now that would clearly prejudice the trial, especially if there was a jury. The jury, when they are overseeing part of a trial, they're not allowed to really read the papers or absorb any information relating to the case. That's what they've got to do. And what the media have got to do is not talk about anything to do with the case. Tommy Robinson broke those rules. He therefore undermined the impartiality of the trial and therefore of the criminal justice system. He therefore went to prison. It's really not that hard. And the thing is, he'd done it before. So he had a suspended sentence. So he's not this victim. He had a fucking suspended sentence. He didn't get a nick. He did the exact same thing before he didn't get a nick. He had a suspended sentence for three months. The judge took that, took this new um, instance of him again being in contempt of court and said, three plus 10, you're going down for 13 months. It's perfectly reasonable. It's not a fucking conspiracy. Gert Wilders, the far-right Dutch politician, said, the authorities are trying to silence us. Yes, they are trying to silence dickheads who could potentially create a mistrial for people who might be nonces and rapists. Yes, imagine if it was your small child, or your daughter or son or your brother or sister, and a dickhead with this, a million Facebook followers, going, wah, 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 fucking there, 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 there and the person gets off scot-free, how would you feel? I would be incensed. I would certainly not think that person is a hero. Now, if you think I'm making this up, he pled guilty. Tom Robinson pled guilty to contempt of court. He accepted he did this, presumably to get a more lenient sentence. He accepted that he did this. Even during the transmission, Google this. Put Tommy Robinson video, Leeds Crown, uh, Crown Court, May 25th. And it will say the broadcast that Tommy Robinson got arrested for. You know, his brave reporting. You'll see it. And he even says, I've, I can't cross the line here because I'll be in contempt of court. And he then proceeds to cross the line because he's a fucking moron. So this was the thing. And he accepted he'd done wrong. And his lawyer, a gentleman called Matthew Harding, said that my client feels very guilty. He's, 
very apologetic. But now, of course, the line coming out from Camp Robinson is that this is all made up. He never pled guilty. He was never even shown the charges. What the fuck are you talking about? And then he was sent to a, a prison which is being compared to Guantanamo Bay. It was a Category C prison. And he's saying he was in solitary confinement. Well, he probably would have been put in segregation, yes, for his own safety. He would have been initially offered to go with the nonces, the nonce wing. He would have said no. I mean, it would have been a good fit, right? Because these are exactly the kind of people that he was trying to help get off scot-free by creating a mistrial. And then they would have got off scot-free and then he could say, look, we don't lock up the nonces. That's his brand. Tom Robbins, go to Amazon, check his book out. It's got like 1,500 reviews, great reviews. I've not read it. Maybe it's a good book. Maybe it's interesting. It's big business. It's big business to serve shit and misinform people. It really, evidently, right? And that's his business. So anyway, he, w- he would have got into segregation. Well, you can argue it's kind of like solitary confinement. I mean, I don't think it's like solitary confinement. In the US, it's called going in the hole. You don't really have any stimulus for any amount of time. He talks quite openly about reading emails inside and so on. That's not really, that's not really what, you know, I don't think in Guantanamo Bay they're going on Facebook. I could be wrong. It could be wrong. Maybe they're sort of, you know, playing PlayStations there too. But, you know, this is interesting because you can't have it both ways if you're a Tommy Robinson supporter. You can't, on the one hand, say, well, British Knicks, they're too soft. They can, you know, they're like fucking hotels. And then on the other hand, say, oh, Tommy Robinson, it was like he was in Guantanamo. He was in a Category C prison. Category C. There's Category A, B, C, D. These are an open prison. Very low risk of trying to escape. Category A is hardcore. And he was in a cat C. This is not like Bobby Sands and the maze. This is not like Alcatraz. It's a cat C prison. He was in there for two months. This is not Nelson Mandela territory, people. He's a little jumped up prick who could have created a mistrial. I'm very happy he went inside. He should have got inside for longer so he stopped fucking doing it. And so that other morons don't get similar ideas. Then let's, talk about, then let's talk about his politics. So he says, well, I'm not a racist. It's a normal guy. He's a normal guy, sure. 2003, he gets arrested by an off-duty police officer after assaulting the police officer, with them having intervened in an altercation between him and his then-girlfriend. Presumably, he thinks his freedoms extend to hitting women. I don't know. He went down for 12 months. He comes out, joins the BMP. He apparently didn't know it was a racist party. He didn't join the Tories or Lib Dems or the Greens or Labour, even UKIP. He joins the BMP and didn't know it was a racist party, despite their policy being whites only. It was a whites only party. There's not many, you know, not many people have joined the BMP. He then goes on to form the EDL, the English Defence League. And you can see the kinds of people's symbolism, rituals, the goings on at EDL demonstrations. And then when you look at the Free Tommy demonstrations, Similar behaviour. Now, I understand many, many people on Facebook online support the guy, but the hardcore that go to those protests, see for yourself the kinds of stuff they're doing. You see, well, that's just a tiny minority. But fool me once, shame on you. Fool me once, shame on me. He's been in Nick repeatedly. Been a member of the BMP. Started the EDL. Fascism and neo-Nazi salutes all over the shop with free Tommy demos. Gert Wilders, far-up politician, is there. In touch with Marine Le Pen. Steve Bannon calls him the backbone of Britain. I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going on here. Analytically, by any measure, Tommy Robinson is on the far right. You know, I can break into somebody's house tomorrow and say, I'm not a robber. What have I done to rob somebody? But you fucking robbed a house. You've robbed a house. You've joined the fucking BMP. You started the EDL. You're a racist. It's really simple. It's really simple. And people like him talk about British values, habeas corpus, rule of law, a fair trial. I I mean, these would be nice British values if we want to agree on some stuff. But then he's saying, actually, the prison he was in was like a kangaroo prison. It was like being in the third world, that the court he was facing was like a kangaroo court. It was all made up. It was all stitched up. You can't have it both ways. 
you can't say on the one hand, Britain's this wonderful place with these great r rules and laws, and then say, actually, it's a fucking shithole. Is he going to start saying that the judge was a Muslim? That the judge has Sharia? Where does it fucking end? Where does this madness end? You can see these double standards coming on top of one another, can't you, repeatedly? It's because he, he lives in a parallel world which he's trying to suck people into. Now, him being such a big phenomenon makes sense because we live in a moment of profound economic, political, cultural turbulence. Huge demographic changes. Um, the economy has been on the ropes for 10 years. Wages have fallen. Home ownership's down. People are struggling. Um, and then, of course, we're going to get hard Brexit next year. You might think that's a good thing, whatever, but I think it's going to happen. And that's going to mean a political crisis next year and the economy going south. And people like Tommy Robinson know this and they're going to try and exploit it. And many, many people are looking for simple answers. And if the answers on offer are Tommy Robinson blaming Muslims and an establishment that has... Look, I'm a critic of the establishment, but I, I, I've been in courts. I, I've seen how courts work. They're not great. They're pretty horrible places. But you're definitely told your charges. You're definitely given a barrister. Um, they don't just make stuff up. Um, there's no prison in Britain like Guantanamo. That's true. Okay. Um, it's just madness. It's just madness. And you have to ask yourself where it ends. Where does it end? If he just keeps on going on like this. Everything is just fucking this parallel universe of reality. And people are gobbling up because their own lives are getting worse. And like I say, if that's the best explanation, I can see why it's appealing. Because many people still look at Labour, the same party of Tony Blair, of Gordon Brown. They don't trust the Tories. They don't really trust anybody in authority. And this person's saying things which resonate. But the truth is, attacking Muslims, saying that they're all rapists, isn't going to give you higher wages. Creating potential mistrials for nonces is not going to give you a house or give your kids a better quality of life. Right? Spreading nonsense about Sharia law isn't going to give us better public services or reduce NHS waiting times. So what could we do? Well, we all have a friend or a relative who has probably shared, believes this Tommy Robinson nonsense. Ask them, say, why do you think he was arrested in the first place? Why do you think he went to prison? Well, you know, it was a conspiracy. He was speaking the truth. No, he created a potential mistrial for potential nonces and rapists. Do you agree? Simple answer, yes or no. I think most people are going to say no. In addition to that, because this is going to carry on, he's probably going to go back into Nick because he's guilty. Okay? In addition to that, there'll be subsequent Free Tommy demonstrations. I think this will get bigger and bigger and bigger. People need to get on the streets. They need to get on the streets. And I don't just mean typical anti-fascist stuff. That's great. Fine. But it needs to be everybody. It needs to be OAPs, black, white, brown, school kids, teenagers, teachers, trade unionists, plumbers, builders, Amazon delivery drivers, nurses, ordinary fucking people. Because it never ends with these people. There's always a new enemy. There is always a new enemy. And when hard Brexit hits next year, the economy goes south. We have a profound rupture in this country politically, which also, by the way, Jeremy Corbyn and Scottish independence, this is all a reflection of. We need to make sure that as few people as possible are seduced by his drivel and his fucking nonsense. And Tommy, I've got a message for you. Do not cause another fucking potential mistrial for a nonce or a rapist. Not hard. Imagine if that was your kids. You fucking moron. Now you might disagree. You might say, Aaron, you don't know what you're talking about. Yada, yada. Put it in the comments below. Tell me why I'm wrong. Show the evidence. Feel free. He was charged with contempt of court. He went down with contempt of court. That's what he was guilty of. Okay? I wish he'd gone into Nick longer. What he did was terrible. He should be in there. He deserves to be in there. Okay? I'm not wrong. Hate to break it to you, but you're a great freedom fighter. The Luton Mandela.
He's a fucking prick. And to the rest of you, I'll see you on the streets because this is only going to get bigger. And we need to give people the alternatives and the answers. I think those answers are socialism. But we also need to resist what is a rising far right on the streets. And I make no bones about it. Tommy Robinson is, has been, and probably always will be, a racist. 